movie all about? It's about um, things that happened in the past. Philosophy now! place like this that history truly comes to life but Hegel thought history was with us anyway all the time history is going on now it's not just about the past and in fact history is also important to philosophy Hegel thought you couldn't separate the two this is his definition of philosophy philosophy is its time grasped in thought Hegel's view of everything being historical is revolutionary because it is directly opposed to much of traditional Western philosophy. Although the pre-Socratic thinker Heraclitus, a great inspiration to Hegel, had once said that you cannot step in the same river twice, thereby assuming that everything is subject to change, most of the Western tradition instead followed Heraclitus' contemporary Parmenides, who argued that you can only talk about being and non-being. Parmenides' view was problematic for history because it held that states of becoming, change and movement could not be regarded as real instances. To think about them as real states of being would be an intellectual mistake. However, philosophers philosophize about everything, so eventually there were speculations about the nature of history. But how does history work? In the medieval West, speculations about the mechanisms of history were developed. They were mostly tied to and informed by Christian doctrines, such as uh, St. Augustine's view that uh, history can be interpreted as an ongoing battle between the realm of God, Civitas Dei, and the godless realm, or the realm of Satan, Civitas Diaboli. Of course, the realm of God was going to win the battle in the end. Gambattista Vico's 18th century explanation of history, though still tied to divine predestination, gives a more down-to-earth account of epochs of cultural growth and decline. But how does historical change happen? One possibility is that it's cyclical, and this is what the ancient Chinese believed. The Chinese have had an interest in history for a very, very long time, and they started much, much earlier than in the West. From the first century onwards, there has always been an official at the imperial Chinese court, a court historiographer, a very important post, someone who would write history. The first court historiographer was Sima Qian, who completed his father Sima Tan's project of writing a history of China up to then, reaching back hundreds of years. The Chinese believed that certain patterns of development would repeat themselves over and over again throughout history. Hegel believed that we had to take steps back before we could move forwards. And that's really a little bit similar in a way. He even described his, his own idea of historical movement in terms of circles within circles. Hegel believed that historical progress happens by virtue of a process which he called the dialectic. As long as this process is at work, historical states are always inherently unstable. Do, do, you, yeah. think, do you think history works the way Hegel describes it? No, I think it's problematic. You know, most historians have, um, have said that um, you know, the evidence is thin on the ground. You know, that we go <laughs> to the more and more rational organization of human life. Uh, certainly there have been many setbacks. But the, the great thing about Hegel, in a sense, is that he believes that this is a dialectical process, right? Again and again, in every state, you know, there, there are opposites, there are extremes, you know, which have to be, rec which calls a crisis, and which have got to be reconciled, and the progress then to a new historic, well-historical people with its state, you know, this progress consists exactly in the um, resolve, uh, resolution of these um, extremes into a um, synthesis, you know, on a higher level. So I've got a higher level of uh, zeitgeist, and zeitgeist, you know, doesn't mean what it means for the sociologists here. <laughs> you know, zeitgeist means something like um, um, an awareness of the conditions which allow human beings to live. In a, in a rational, reasonable, 
Yes. Well, you're in accordance with reason, you know, and be free. Yes. And know themselves, you know, as free agents. So, um, every, every world historical stage is given, corresponds to a particular stage, you know, of this rational organization of the state and of the self-awareness of the human age, you know, as a rational agent. But rational, properly, is only at the end. Much of Western thought, first motivated by religion, later on by a positive belief in human possibilities and human nature, has described history as a straightforward progress from an unsophisticated, primitive stage to something much better and more sophisticated. This kind of future would not just be better, but it would also be more rational. Ideas of that kind are very strong in thinkers like Kant and Herder. What do you think? Are things getting better? Who makes history? Is it made by kings and queens, generals and geniuses? Are the rest of us just passengers floating on the currents we can't control? Hegel would have denied this. He would say we are not just involved in the historical process, we are also its co-makers. Karl Marx agreed with Hegel. He tells us that revolutions are the locomotives of history. But while Hegel had thought that ideas drive history, Karl Marx believed that real material conditions were more important. His philosophy of history is therefore referred to as historical materialism. In issue 50 of Philosophy Now, an Egyptian philosopher, Imad al-Din al-Jabouri, wrote about Ibn Khaldun. Now, Ibn Khaldun was a medieval Islamic philosopher who pioneered the scientific understanding of history. According to Ibn Khaldun, history shouldn't limit itself to simply recording events, but should also examine the underlying social context and political biases. He was the first philosopher to stress the importance of politics within science. Ibn Khaldun stressed the importance of critical thinking in history to discover and correct false records. Many historian has, has lied or, 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 or made an erroneous record of what's gone on, either because of bigotry, misplaced trust, ignorance or flattery of the current ruler. A good historian must therefore have not only a good knowledge of the past, but also a good knowledge of the present, especially its, its political, cultural and social environment. The past is like the future, water from water, wrote Ibn Khaldun, which al Jabouri takes to mean that history is one big movement of events, not divided up into national or local matters and continuing in cycles. I asked philosopher Richard Barron in what sense we might learn from history Baron told me that though we can analyze the past, historical analysis does not actually allow us to make predictions. So don't expect history to tell us what's going to happen next, what's going to be the next big crisis. But what history will tell us is that there will be some crisis or other. Human problems never go away. History isn't going to end in some perfect utopia. And what it will also do is draw our attention to the fact that some things are more important than you might expect. For example, we can see from history that sometimes people's religious beliefs are really important and that sometimes people's perceptions of what happened in their country 400, 500 years ago still matter to them a lot. So that's helpful, it sets some parameters, it draws our attention to what we need to think about when we're deciding what to do next. The other thing I think history can do it shows that we have more options than you might expect. Things have been tried in the past that if they hadn't worked in the past, you'd have thought, no, maybe that's not done. Finally, even the end of history has been predicted. In fact, many, many times. Most recently, the historian Francis Fukuyama stated that since modern liberal democracies constitute the pinnacle of development, no further progress is possible. Philosophy Now, however, would recommend to just wait and see.